did very poorly, Avery, and it's been kind of rebuilding, but it does look like TI-12 has a very promising future for Eastern Europe. After all, we've already got a top three performance at the Majors by Nine Pandas. Team Spirit seems to be doing all right for themselves, and very likely we're going to see three or four teams at this TI from Eastern Europe, where last year we didn't even see any Eastern European teams in the top 12. It was shameful. Very Absolutely shameful. shameful for the region. That's why they're motivated here. Though, you can never underestimate how much can go wrong in the next two months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You experienced that before? I mean, TI is a fickle beast. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, you think you're going to do well at it, you crash out. You think your team is destroyed, you win it. It's a high, high pressure tournament. And if you're not used to it, you don't have the veteranship. Sometimes you just crumble, even if you're a favorite going in. So I, I never write teams off. I never write them in. I never write to them at all. I just I think they look like forward to, to the tournament. Okay. But you are right. CIS is looking better than they have looked in a long time, especially the, the breadth of the region. I feel like usually Eastern Europe has had one dominant team, and that's about it. Yep. And the other teams are like, well, maybe they'll get last, and they probably do. Now it feels like we have multiple contenders, multiple rising stars, nine pandas, especially on the back of Kiyotaka. I mean... I don't think I've seen a player look this dominating in such a short time period out of nowhere in a long ass time. Yeah, he's had uh, one hell of a performance and a large reason why Nine Pandas have been able to go so far. This duo of him and Ramses seems to always be able to lock down mid to late game for you. So, as long as Nine Pandas can get there in the first place, they seem to do pretty damn well for themselves, and that's going to be up to Amiro and Antares here in the off lane. They're up against Moposhka and Yotoro in the Undying and the Terra Blade. Oh, there's our early spin here. Collapse is going to be dying as uh, there's nowhere for him to go to, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. First Blood goes to Solo. Right for that uproar, level one will not be able to get out of the Blade Fury's range. And First blood on this lane. Ramsey's is very happy with that. Especially he started this Blades of Attack build. This is like a build you can kind of only do on Juggernaut. He has the super high BAT and you can just abuse the extra damage. Forsaking early stats on an Agi carry. Usually not up there, but it will produce a very fast phase boost for Ramsey's on this lane. Which could prove to net them more kills down the road. So already, nine pandas fulfilling the game plan here on the early laning phase. And Kiyotaka is doubling up the mid CS pretty much. A very good sign for them as you really want the Shaker to get off to a fast start here and be able to play through the combination with the Techies. Because that's what I'm looking for from non pandas I think Techies is an exceptional hero this patch. He almost always guarantees you an even lane to a lane win as we talked about. But the other thing this hero does is he combines really well with almost any mid playmaker. He sure. provides you a huge amount of follow-up damage, follow-up stun, follow-up slow, disarm, magic amp for a lot of the mid heroes who play off the magic damage. These little small things make a mid-spirit heroes, or in this case, the Shaker, a spirit in disguise, feel really good about making kill rotations. So I, if I'm not paying this, I'm looking for Antares and Kiyotaka to combine, and I feel like that is where their success lies all the time. Those two players combining, making the kills happen on the map, and just racking up the KDA for Kiyotaka as he continues his rampage through the Dota scene. Almost reminds me of a young Sumail. Mm, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Some, like, big playmaking mid laners. It's just a killer. Eye killer. Yeah. I don't remember the last just straight-up killer that came into the Dota scene. Or maybe, like, Whisper. Maybe Whisper. I mean, he's not mid, but... Like, similar, I placed out right. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Definitely the special thing about Kiyotaka is some of his specialty heroes. Everyone talks about the Tinker. We'll see how he performs on the Earthshaker here. We've seen a couple of Earthshakers already in Dream Link. Uh, is this going to be like a continuing trend, you think, Avery? I mean, it dumpsters uh, some of these uh, uh, spirit heroes, right? For sure has good lane matchups. As Nine Panels will run off this Tombstone, Apashka cannot get the kill with that level 3 timing. Little missed opportunities on this lane for Team Spirit. If you compare this to when Nine Pandas ran this lane and we're just chain killing people very strongly when you have the meta tombstone up, but Nine Pandas may be used to playing against it. And I'm familiar with those timings. I think the Shaker has some viability in this patch. I actually like the hero. I think even with the stun nerfs, he still has a lot of viability. As a support, his lane is a little weak, but if you get into that mid game, the shard, the chaining off the fissure, the spell does a lot of follow-up damage. 
little goes like this, he really helps. And Collapse, he does not need much follow-up damage as he just claims the skeleton, Ooh. but will pay the back-end price. Those phase boots already up for Ramses. Yeah, that's what happens when you give away first blood to a Juggernaut. He's going to have the boots advantage, and any go you make is going to probably naturally just trade out. So still to the favor of nine pandas. Multiple trades happening at the same time. Keo talking with the slight block on Laurel Mid. We'll get the bottle refill as well. He does have level advantage and lane control here. It's going to be a question if Nine Panas can punish it. Get that kill. Maposhka barely surviving as well. Yeah, a little bit lucky there. The sticky bomb didn't land onto him. Chasing after Ramses. Really just trying to force something out of him. Kiyotaka. Getting some serious advantage now. 30 and 9 compared to 22 and 5. And that's not even level 6 picked up with the Earthshaker, who is, uh, he is going to get that level 6 before Laurel. Flaps in trouble. Uh-oh. He doesn't have the upheaval up. One more second, but he can't get it out in time. Ramses picks a third kill in this lane. Boy, this, this is just not working the way they wanted this to work. The Primal Beast. This is not a hero you want to have operate from behind. I mean, it was no. a mid laner for the longest time because it needed the solo experience. Especially a last pick Primal Beast for Team Spirit. Yeah. Like they got that ninth. It's losing the lane up here. I mean, it is ultra last pick Juggernaut, so technically 9 has had the answer, but Ramsey just played this lane to perfection. 1-0 and 2. Phase Boots Rush paying off. Straight into the Battle Fury here. You lose a little value with that Battle Fury because you don't have the treads, but if you're getting this much extra net worth out of the lane versus a very strong laner, you're happy to make that exchange. Now it's just a question if Nine Pandas can snowball one of these other lanes to create space for that Jug, who is just going to be off to the races with the start he's had. Haste room for Kiyotaka. Very strong on him as well. The support battle continues here. He does have a Lotus on Maposhka, so he's not going to die so easily, but Antares can keep him kited around and force those resources out of him. Goes for another one, and Maposhka does successfully bait him in for another round of Decay, which gets the kill. Just thinking about this seven-minute Wisdom room, too. Oh, there it is. The haste rune pickup for Kiyotaka allows him to be able to get an Echo Slam kill onto the Marana. Nine Pandas in cruise mode this game. They really are. They, yeah, they're going to TP Miro to contest the seven minute wisdom. You cannot give it to Maposhka here. Might escape. No, that's not too bad. They get the other one, which Collapse does. Secures it for the boys against Solo. Barely. They should be able to get the kill off this one. Blood Grenade leading into the arrow. That's going to be a whiff. Solo. Pretty damn fast, and I guess it's not going to be a kill because Collapse doesn't have the Onslaught up for a sec. I mean, you can't catch that skeleton booty. What? What? <laughs> so random. Not the first thing I think of when I look at uh, Pugna. Don't body shame him, man. God damn. I mean, he's all skin and buff. Not everyone's some buffed up skin. military chad like you. <laughs> Solo is really pushing his luck, but he dodges another arrow. Still managing to stay alive. Boy, things just are not going Team Spirit's way. Mira can't land an arrow. They're losing all their lanes. Then, then again, they're not that far behind. Only 1k, but... It just feels like Nine Pandas are, are getting a lot of small things going for them. Yeah. Especially with a lineup that, in theory, has the ultimate late-game beast in the Juggernaut. Nine Pandas should be very happy with their position, just continuing to scale. These games where Juggernaut gets ahead are... Must be a very large increase in the win chance, just based off that alone. Because it's, it's hard to beat this hero late-game. You just bust up your team with the Healing Ward. Team Spirit have decent ways to do in the Healing Ward, though, and they can catch the Jug on the map. So going down a little bit in this is not the end-all be-all. It's not an absolutely free Jug game. They can create a lot of tempo in the mid-game. And Laurel, on this Ember, a hero we've seen dominate in the last few days, Team Spirit need to start playing through him. Chainstone's not going to be good enough, but Poshka leaves the Tombstone behind the tower. They'll quickly address that and address the Undying. Oh, the damage is racking it. Oh, what a blast off. Actually lands onto the Ember Spirits, who might have gone back in for the kill on Kiyotaka. He's still, still echo gonna try. Here. Kiyotaka turns around with the Echo, hits it on Mira. They get the roar onto the Ember Spirit at the same time. They're going to clean up everybody from Spirit, unless Mira barely gets out in time. The round of nukes just coming up, but... 
I mean, Miro, very happy about that. He has to come in and get a huge Ember kill with the Roar. Yeah. On top of not really missing too much. Count me in right there. A lot of levels for him. He was having a probably the roughest laning phase of anybody on Nine Pandas, but still having a pretty decent one here. And the biggest thing is it continues to shut down Laurel who's not finding that Ember momentum that you really want on this hero. And it's also very important for the Team Spirit supports because they don't have an easier core to play through right now. The Primal got shut down on lane. It's not a guaranteed connection right now against the Juggernaut, and you really want these chains up to be able to land arrow to lock them in around the Tombstone for Collapse to come and connect into. The more that Ember gets shut down, the more it becomes harder for Team Spirit to find all these little connections they're looking for in this early game, which they want to pick up the pace of right now. When you have Ember Primal Beast, you do not want to sit back and farm. You want to be smashing heads into the dirt. They may be able to take the tower down to the dirt. Nobody's here to defend it. Good read. I don't know how this always happens for Ember, but it does. It really does. Even without the Orb of Corrosion complete, which goes to show how Laurel is a bit behind right now. Lowest net worth core in the game. I mean, this is the downside of the Shaker picking an Ember. I don't think you can really stop his slight spam and him forcing you out of areas, unless you're just chain killing him, which didn't happen. As compared to something like the, the Dragon Knight or the Huskar or the Lone Druid, right? Those matchups, you're pushing against the Ember. You're pushing him and taking his tower. And I think that feels overall slightly better for the game. But of course, the Shaker can provide you with the lockdown later that's more reliable against him in the mid game. Everything's in Dota's a trade off, it's just a matter of hitting your power points and making the most of them. Sure. They but sacrifice I, their tower in order to get Blink Dagger up on Earth Shaker, right? Right. But I do think it's interesting that Nine Pandas, I mean, I know Kiyotaka's not a Huskar player, but they had that Huskar option on the on the fourth. Hmm. That is a dangerous pick for Team Spirit, unless you're 100% certain he will never play it. Because it was a damn good Huskar game. Raise no hand in anger at your past. Nether Ward versus Tombstone. Nine Pandas always going to be backing away from the Tombstone if possible. What, what is with these guys with like the half face cam, man? Don't want their uh, <laughs> mouth to be seen. <laughs> this is some like weird pseudo allowed thing. No, it's like it's like when uh, you know the the baseball coaches they cover their hands when they they make their their calls. I don't think that is to make sure that nobody is able to see. Got to watch out for those scouts, man. By the way, I saw them adjust that in the cam before the game. <laughs> like I saw, like it, was, it had his full face. No, and he was okay. like, no, no, no. We were watching Solo's cam, and in the back of Solo's cam, I saw one of the nine pandas player literally tilt their camera so we only saw half their face, and he was adjusting it and looking at the Discord. So they're consciously doing it. I'm on to you. Yeah, uh, I, they've been doing that for a long time. Ever since the DPC started, basically, Antares Starstorm is going to be able to finish him off. Mira picking up a kill without losing his life for once. Oh no, Miro coming in from the side, but they don't have enough stuns. Until Fisher? the Fisher comes in. Echo, no, Echo. No. Where he was it? Blinked forward, maybe thought he had more time or something, or didn't want to use it. Now he's going to use it on the Undying, surely. He regrets not taking the Ember Spirit kill when he had a chance. Do you think he was out of range? I mean, even if he's out of range, the Echo hits would have killed him. I mean, I will say this is his debut performance on Earthshaker. Kiyotaka has not played the Earthshaker in a professional match before, so, you know, maybe this is just a little bit of discomfort. Something that he surely played in pubs and scrims, but... That looked weird. Oh. Interesting play. He'll cancel the charge here. Another nice fact for the Shaker of Nine Pandas this mid-game. Just preventing clap collapse going in. But every time you can get this Ember kill, you really want to secure it. Continue to shut Laurel down, keep him down in the net worth, remove the playmaking potential from the Team Spirit lineup. As you can see what they're trying to do, they just want to get in these skirmishes off the chains. When it's this deep, it's very difficult though, and the Collapse, you are in no man's land. I guess there's no roar, so... There is a blast off, but not enough damage. And all this is happening, I think Team Spirit... I mean, which one are you happening? Uh, happier with? You basically have four versus four. Nobody's dying. Nobody's accomplishing anything quite yet. But you do have a Juggernaut free farming and a Terrorblade free farming. I'm taking the Jug. Especially if the Jug's ahead. Maybe if the Terrorblade had a faster start and he's ahead, you're like, all right, Terrorblade's going to hit his Scotty timing. We're just going to take the fight with that. Jug's not going to be ready. But this Jug is going to be ready to fight. Yeah. 
he can get in those exchanges. He can contribute. A healing ward off of Primal Beast Initiationer's Lane, if it saves your hero, that's a big deal in these engagements. You have the Pugna as well for some extra sustain. Uh, I'm taking Ramses in this situation. Yeah, with a Battle Fury pickup, he's going to be a terror for this Terror Blade the entire game. Thousand net worth ahead. We're going to have a mech picked up for Mira. Still working on that Maelstrom for Laurel. Still trying to recover his game because he just had not He's working for kills and hasn't been able to claim. No, he's too far behind. DD will definitely help with that. The one fact for the Terror Blade, though, is you have this decent portion of the mid game where Jug, he farms fast, but he doesn't shove lanes aggressively. Whereas the Terror Blade, he's creating map pressure for his team. Yeah. Early Manta on Yatoro, he can shove in waves deep. He can get into aggressive areas and cut. And this will create <laughs> some map pressure that will create openings. Whereas Nine Pandas have to do it the hard way, which is just kind of smoke up mid. This is uh, a little bit awkward now. Decrepify will actually help him back out from that tombstone range. Hero's waiting for that chains. TP to bottom lane. Collapse going for the kill, but Miro's already backed off. They go for the kill on mid at the same time. But again, nine pandas managing to definitely dodge every single one of these attempts from Team Spirit. Sustain's just too much right now. He'll talk a very aggressive. Oh, it's echo with the echo. This time. Is that enough? Chain stun the blast off. It's gonna come in and lands. He did not expect that one. Laurel didn't have the him. remnant. Yeah, he had the remnant coming out, but didn't get very far out. Kiyotaka is out of mana here, so he's going to be struggling in this fight. Looks like he's probably just going to flat out die, and Ram's yeah, going to take a... <laughs> but let that be a lesson that nobody nobody just kills Kiyotaka. Mm. This is a good time to readjust your cameras. <laughs> I'm telling you, they did it purposely, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, believe me, I know. <laughs> Before you even started casting, the DPC started, all the players, all the players, so many of them would just be like, eh, it's a forehead cam. Again, I these, don't want to be on camera. These two teams are Too bad. Them. You're in entertainment. Get used to it. That is true. Solo had a lot of time to think about how hard his skull was going to be crushed there. <laughs> That poor fragile skull. No muscle Radiant to protect it, just straight bone. Attack. Decent find for Team Spirit. They get the Yatoro connection. He's probably their strongest hero on the map right now by far. And he's happy to get involved in those overextensions, especially on the Shaker. This is this is the downside of Shaker. Like, when you go in, you're in. <laughs> you're not a spirit hero. You do not have the ability to jump and then get back out like all these other mobility mids do. You're just uh, locked you call in them, the cave. You call them a pseudo spirit hero. So which one is it? Is he not a spirit hero? Is he well, that's why he's pseudo. Okay. He thinks he's a spirit hero, but he's not. <laughs> I mean, he he becomes a spirit hero again when he gets hacked himself. Right? Yes, that is uh, when it comes online. He is going that second here. I think it's needed because again, he has to be able to go in and out. <laughs> he has to be able to deal with the tombstone slowing down some of his movement. If you blink and go on somebody, tombstone gets dropped and you're just stuck in there. Your mid hero is just gone. Doesn't matter how much net worth he has. Yeah. So he, Kiyotaka really needs the Axis game. He's going to continue to farm up for it. And that'll be a big power spike for Nine Pandas to take the fight. Also an item that does help you farm with the cleave hits. Something that gets forgotten about a little bit, but was one of the reasons that Shaker was very popular in the offlane when he was getting picked more. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that they changed it to be able to give cleave. You can get some nasty base damage buffs up on this hero. I still support the armlet shaker build, by the way. What, armlet uh, axe? Yeah, you just armlet totem. That number rockets up. <laughs> Ramsey's, Ramsey's been quiet the entire game. All of a sudden, he decides it's time to get aggressive. Bolts into the jungle and immediately Omni slashes Maposhka. And then immediately runs away back to Ancients. He's like, all right. You know, I feel like that was somebody be like, hey, can we get something done? Uh, I would love to get our carry involved. Uh, we have Omni slash. And Ramsey's like, oh, oh, we got Omni slash, huh? Fine, I'll go do something. All right, Omni slash is on cooldown. I'm going to go hit more creeps. Maposhka just sitting there. Why me, man? Dun, 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 dun. As we see, we got the Aghanim Scepter done for our Beastmaster. He's going to go for Heaven's Halberd and just tank up build. Just try and get in there with the uh, drums going. 
increase his survivability as much as possible. It does mean uh, the same thing with the techies, same thing with the Earthshaker pre ag So you have these heroes that do want to just go in. I feel like a pro the Tombstone is actually far more important in this game than it usually is. It is a very important Tombstone game. They needed to live to debilitate the Shaker and the Beastmaster in the fight. Yeah. And Nine Pandas don't have the easiest Tombstone killers because they have the three melee cores that have to get in there. Only the Jug has attack speed. I guess you have Inner Beast Aura, but if you can start the fights on one of the cores and draw like this and drop the Tombstone after, that fight should be very, very comfortable for Team Spirit here. Your only real worry is some crazy Omni Slash. You don't have a lot to soak up the Omni here, but you have Murano ult that can kind of disjoin it, and you have some TB illusions. You get like one more Lotus or one more Manta or anything like that. I think you're pretty content trying to soak this up for Ramses for a lot of time. And Yatoro is just going to go second item Butterfly here. So this is going to be a very scary Terrorblade when he hits that. I expect Team Spirit to want to smoke, take a fight, or commit for the Roshan. They might even not need to do anything before just going in the pit because they have Undying. It's a very fast Roshan with the Butterfly Terrorblade. Gossamer Cape on top of it. It's going to be a huge amount of evasion. Butterfly you, you can't and dodge Butterfly. Totem hit it, right? Even with... Gossamer Cape or some of this weird interaction? Uh, I don't believe so. Is that a thing? Let me just double check. That was the thing that they did a while back. I don't know if it got changed again. 7 to 10, even, even game. Pretty snooze game, to be honest. The last team time these two teams faced up against each other, it did go 2 1. And, uh, I mean, the. the <laughs> It felt like the laning phase was super important in that series. And I guess this is what happens when you get like a relatively even laning phase. Like, yes, Nine Pandas won it, but they didn't win it so hard that they can continue to crush Team Spirit. They're going to try and attempt Roshan here, but uh, it seems like somebody has thought better of that option. I mean, this is Team Spirit's Roshan, in my opinion, with the Tombstone, with the Terrorblade. He can be on collapse, but he can't get it off. A like that, a hero that doesn't have buyback. Instant smoke. They want to catch Moonlight Shadow. Gonna hide Team Spear for now. That Hawk going in, but Yatoro wants to turn. Trying to surprise him, but the Decrepify is gonna help out here, and the Earthshaker comes in immediately, chain stunning up Yatoro. Still has the Echo, holds on to it for now. Jumps away just before the chains can come out from Laurel, and he'll get a little bit of a heal from Solo. So if they allow them to be able to reset, it's not good. He goes in for it, man, to dodge, but no, that just helps the Echo Slam do all the more. Fisher, Fisher, lined up, hits Laurel, chain stun, he's dead as well. The re-engage from Nine Pandas, just way too good. They go and bait the meta, bait the tombstone, reset, get out of that zone control, and just dunk, dunk the Terror Blade into oblivion. Kiyotaka is getting out of control with this Axe timing right here. Do not have the lockdown for him. It's got to be cut. Oh, well, I guess that's the lockdown. Cut down from <laughs> okay. collapse, being able to hit him with the Omnislot. Well, you so can't leap over a Primal Beast. I guess We not, learned that no. today. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, I guess it's kind of forced movement if you yeah. hit somebody, so. I think you should be able to leap over him, though, you know? Yeah, but then uh, that would that would mean that Onslaught wouldn't land against, like, Batrider and any kind of, like, no, this is, a way this is a way different Z level. <laughs> what, you think he jumps higher yeah, than these sure. flying heroes? Okay. And it's got hops. Mm. Either way, Radiant Team Spirit scanning. Collapse is able to come back, salvage that engagement with a huge shaker kill, and now you're straight into that Roshan pit. So all of that work that Nine Pandas did to try and get this Roshan away from Spirit ends up yielding nothing in the end somehow. Despite a great team fight. Enchant Totem can miss, by the way. So is that that's just a guaranteed miss on the Gossamer Cape. That kind of sucks. Yeah. It doesn't get rid of the buff, though. Right, you just keep swinging. Yeah, you just have to keep going. Kind of like how the Ursa matchup works. Back into it around the Roshan pit. Grab the Juggernaut while he's spinning. If they only had the physical damage to kill him, it would have been fantastic. Onslaught on through two. But now he's going to be on the Slash once again. And again, Collapse is going to fall to the Fury of the Blades. Bounce back in. Laurel's still in deep, though, and he's going to die as well as Ramses quickly cuts him down with a big crit. Uh, Kiyotaka just playing these fights so patient with his fissures and stuns. It's forcing a lot of Remnant just jamming out from Laurel. And, I mean, he just jams his Remnant straight into the blade, not where he wanted to end up. 
Another decent team fight for nine pandas. Even though Team Spirit have the Aegis, they don't want to fight without Yatoro's meta there. Getting caught out in no man's land. They got the uh, Roshan bounty as well, yes. so some team gold for them, though they're still down by 5k. I mean, this position feels a lot more secure for Nine Pandas than it did a couple of minutes ago. Just looking at how these heroes are progressing, their scale is going to become insane here. You're going to hit a butterfly timing on your Juggernaut. Actually, he just got it. Yeah. So he is providing his own set of evasion that is proving problematic. He has not died this game. 6-0 and 4 for Ramses. Just snowballing off that great laning phase and pulling really far ahead of Yatoro here. He is creating a significant gap. These Omni Slashes have all landed. Again, if you go in with your Bruisers in the Ember and the, the Primal Beast, there's not much to soak up the bounces. You're just there. You're tanking it for the boys. Which is why you kind of need uh, Team Spirit to be able to hit some of these like slight arrow combinations, right? Like kind of be able to get the poke, kill somebody from a distance. They need the stuns to land. Absolutely. They have very few lo lockdown tools to be able to deal with the Jug or the Shaker, so you need to make them count especially during Collapse's BKB timing. When Collapse goes in, you need to be in there with them. It cannot be so far or so deep that the team gets separated and the damage is not in a follow-up situation. Because that type of fight, he got a full duration ult on Ramses. But Ramses walks it off. Yeah. That is the type of thing that cannot happen for Team Spirit to win these engagements. You need to sync up the damage, make sure the Terrorblade can get in close enough. I wouldn't even mind an early blink on Yatoro in this game. I don't think he's going to buy it, but even... You have to supplement it somehow. Maybe Moonlight Shadow is the key here. Get the cores in super deep with each other. Or Yotoro just front lines more with this Aegis. I think the scary part about that idea is the fact that you are... If you go in, it means you're okay. naturally grouping up for the Ankle Slam, which is going to be put to work onto Maposhka. Yotoro quickly using a Sunder to get himself back up to full. Not that great a Sunder. No. It wasn't, but they can also get the pick off here. Oh, no, he's actually going to live thanks to the pipe and collapse. Moonlight Shadow, finally, the vision is revealed. Solo gets it with the dust. They catch Mira as well as he tried to leap on out. Again and again, Team Spirit just do not have the answers to nine pandas. And what you're saying is true. It's only going to get worse from here. They're happy to take that Undying pick off if you can't get Tombstone. Just frees up the whole fight for the Shaker. That is why he is dunking him down. Nine Pandas catching Team Spirit off again. This is their Aegis Butterfly Terrorblade period, and they're not getting a good fight. The Primal Beast and the Terrorblade have not connected once on a single target. And this has been the problem. The heroes from Nine Pandas are surviving the initiations because of the double sustain mechanics. At some point, this is going to have to sync up. You're going to have to turn this game around because Ramses is just getting out of control here. Perfect game so far from him. He's going to go for the MKB, and he will have the answers to the Terrorblade before Yotoro has them for him. Glimmer Cape helps shrug off a lot of that magic damage. The problem is going to be is that, like, they can stop some of that, like, burst on the side of Nine Pandas, but it feel like their sustained damage is much better. Whereas Team Spirit is super reliant on being able to get a burst kill, like, off of an arrow. But you've got four staff to crapify all of these different kind of saves. Max Solar Crest on Antares. He's farmed as hell. Healing Ward potentially going to be thrown out. It's rough. Team Spirit, they're going to have to come up with uh, some sort of game plan that goes against the odds. So they are now 12k down. And BKB done for Kiyotaka. Huge item for him. He can just commit in. He's not afraid of anything outside of Terrorblade sticking on him. And he is hitting hard. These totems are hitting for a thousand damage already. Hello. Goodbye. Man, this is a good hero for Kiyotaka because he can KS every kill. That is true. Yeah. Continue his uh, extremely high kills per game average. Third in the world. That's why mids like to play Shager. They just come in and totem hit every hero. And then end the game like 20 and 2. And like, oh, damn, I'm so good. It's an ego stroke. I feel like most mid lane is constant ego stroke. Which really is yeah. why they typically perform so badly when they lose lane really hard or something like that. Because you just got your ego put in check. Absolutely. Top tower is under Which is maybe why some of these like favorable matchups. You could tell yourself, oh, it's a losing matchup. But, you know, you get crushed hard enough. I mean, there's always a reason, you know. Oh, he got a lucky rune. 
Oh, I, I, you know, my block got glitched out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he got a bottle refill. I did. Yeah, he had ganks. Yeah, he had a ward. I had a fly in my room. Always something with these guys, man. Got to protect that ego. You ever hear a five complain about the game? All the time. Okay, well, that was a bad point. Chain stuns, blast off, follows it up. Collapse can still get out, though. So this is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, it's pretty tanky. Yeah. I guess Vindicator Axe will do that. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. That helps him exactly where he needs it, right? He <laughs> has he has the strength gain. He just needs the armor. What an obnoxious item for Shaker. Every time you stun someone, they get 20 armor, and then you smack them. They don't take any damage. Then they're unstunned. They get the other benefits of the axe. Guys, stop stunning them. I need to do physical damage. Yeah, it's like, I still don't understand how that this is a neutral item. Like, oh, yeah. it, it literally just half the item is the only part that really matters, and it's still incredibly OP. You got two of them. A Poshka has one, too. 20 armor. Who cares about the 30 damage? 20 armor. Also, there's a token on the ground. Whose token's that? Uh, that would be Solo's. Uh, I think he's the one with only a tier 2 item. Would they see the bottom? She does not have the armor, but she escapes. Got the BKB off before the arrow. No reset. Nine Pandas have been pretty disciplined, I've noticed, about, like, if a fight just doesn't start correctly, if it's a little bit awkward, they don't try and keep pushing it. And, or if like, they okay. get the meta or tombstone. The second they see meta or tombstone, they just leave. Yeah. Why do you have to take that fight? The lockdown not there from Team Spirit, you just wait it out and go back in. You're not losing anything, especially if you're happy with your scale. And the lockdown would be collapsed, but that also, suppose he has to, like, go in deep. They found Laurel. BKB immediately goes off. One downside of this Earthshaker, hard to get these chain stuns without using Echo Slam now that uh, all the stuns duration got nerfed. Yeah, you will not get him. But Kiyotaka, he doesn't need to play for these insta kills, right? You can see how Nine sure. Pandas are playing this game. They're just going in, forcing action. You get a BKB, you get a meta, you get a tombstone. They're happy with that. They're not, they don't need the full team fight right now. They're just taking away map space from Team Spirit. Every one of these little wins results in another 1k lead. They're very happy with these exchanges they're getting right now and continuing to build. I mean, Kiyotaka has Crystallis. He also has an Enchanted Quiver. These hits are a sledgehammer to the face. Yeah, seriously. If he catches any support, they're gone. I mean, maybe Maposhka survives with the Axe, but the Ember is super susceptible to a Chain Stun if the Roar connects or a Techie Stun. It's just a massive threat. 3,000 HP to boot, BKB, and he has double sustain behind him. Can't really go on him, and he's going on you. What is the answer here for Team Spirit? It's just more items on Yatoro and hope he slays everybody? Never refuse go. I guess it worked at TI. Yeah, it kind of worked there. Best performing carry by far. He gets the MKB, so there is still a chance for them to be able to collapse. He needs to get hold of Ramses. And they need the Terror Blade with meta pumping the damage onto him. Maybe they can get through that, but now the problem's going to be he has a second life. So, High ground defense at least makes that easier. That's true. you're all going to be in the same place, guaranteed. And Collapse will finish up in Ags. Pretty interesting item choice. I guess you can break the Shaker when he goes in. It's pretty obnoxious. Yeah, it's definitely annoying. Well, Help him in general just be kind of tankier and yeah, it's a lot of just damage. Put, a, put damage out. Yeah, just a good item on the hero. 3,000 HP now with that Vindicator Axe armor. Pretty hard to go on him. And you can look at the TB illusions on the map right now. Yatoro has him in the right place, cutting both those waves. So Team Spirit getting a lot of gold. They can hold the, the base against this Aegis. Really easy point oh, though found Nine him. Pandas. He found Laurel. Laurel does manage to get away. That's going to be an Echo Slam used. Nine Pandas, they want to keep this going without their ultimate. Kiyotaka just short of having enough damage to burst that Ember through the Flame Guard. Oh, oh almost got Mira there. Yeah. This damage is intense. Fisher onto two. Pops BKB. Beware of the arrow. Just walk Collapse in. is going to grab him through his BKB. Nice Primal Roar, but... Kiyotaka cannot get far enough away. Laurel! Oh, he jumped away right as the Omni Slash was on top of him. That was just the him. mini. 
He still has a big one. Ooh, he has the Swiss Slash, but the Omni Slash still ready to go. There Another. Is. Now the Sunder is going to be used again. A Sunder that really didn't do that much. Rams oh, not that close. Collapse back. Collapse, though, does do. Push them back in. Blast off. Lands onto the two of them, though. Rams, he's, he starts going to work, and he still has that Aegis. So Team Spirit's just trying to kite him right now. And Maposhka uh, trying to do it, but the Swiss Flash allows Ramses to stick on some of these heroes. Cannot get away. Now, Kiyotaka back. back in a play. They do manage to get that stun. Trying to finish up these Aegis, but the Decrepit by Drain brings down the Terror Blade, and he does not have the buyback, whereas Ramses had the Aegis to be able to work with. Double buy for Spirit. They want to defend this Tombstone. Ramses just walks up, takes it, and there's still a cheese. On the shaker Arrow here. in for the side. That's a nice one. Can they kill him? The blast off goes off, trying to delay some of this damage and collapse. He went for the squishier heroes instead of Ramsey's. God, like, nobody. Leading up, Laurel going in. Chains locks him down. Collapse coming back in once again. Has his ultimate. Eats the cheese, though. That back up to full, and he is pretty damn full. Oh, you know Team Spirit won one of these cores for their trouble, especially the dieback on Kiyotaka would be huge. Just so damn tanky, and these Swiss slashes are causing some serious issues. Ramsey's, he just a couple hits, and then Swiss slash puts you in danger. Both teams committing a lot of buybacks for this push. Nine Pandas want one more lane if they can get it. Solo Bob back to give him the sustain. Ramsey still feels untouchable here as he pushes to 10 and 0. Swiss slash back, up, and another corpse for the blade. He is Ooh. feasting out here. 18,000 net worth lead. And are they going to just try and finish the game? Terraplate's back up in a second here. This is very bold. Doesn't have meta for 20. But yeah, he, he's still strong if you can connect him and a collapse ultimate. Okay, they're just going to hit. No, maybe. And he's pushing this. I mean, your time to go is now if you're spirit, since some of the nine panda heroes are still far. I mean, he's, he has Omni Slash back up for Ramsey, so maybe he's thinking his Omni Slash is equal to the meta. It's probably better than the meta. Spear will hold their last racks, but Nine Pandas, I don't think they're ready to leave. I mean, Soul can also just blast this down. They really want to slow siege it, but Ramsey's has no intentions of taking this game slowly. Marl had to go in, away from the Earthshaker, and he's out of mana now. They do manage to grab Miro into the arrow. That lands, Collapse, though, is going to take the full Omni Slash out. Yatoro could do nothing to stop that one. And Yatoro, he can't defend this melee barracks. He has to back up and reset. It's going to be Megas. Just can't hit anybody. Got roared during his BKB. Then he tries to hit GG. the Beastmaster. The Beastmaster gets decrept. I mean, then he's disarmed. And all the answers for the Terror Blade and none for the Juggernaut in this game. And that was just kind of the story from the lane.